Tigers. Go 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 Tigers. Locked out. Even I can't get past the security. Harrison Ford! Also, here I'm with Harrison Ford. Put back off. Mother, there is no other like mother. So treat her right. Mother, I always love her. My mother. So treat her right. Treat her right. Oh. Perhaps you remember your first edible. The recount to take us off the air tonight. That is our broadcast. Konnichiwa! Bombot Family to Watashitachi no live hoso e you koso! Watashitachi wa anata no shichou to listening no yorokobi no tameno sbarashii show wo motte imasu! Ima anata no host, Scotty Jero to Jerry Cable ni Stay Bombard! Wo tanoshin de oboete oite kudasai! What is going on, Bombad fam? It's me, your boy, Scotty Jero. Special shout out to Jerry Cable for those wonderful intro videos this evening. And um, we've got some more on the way. I'm not even kidding. No joke here. We do plan on having some new intro videos coming to you next week. Got to work on that this weekend. All that being said, very happy to be here. Let's get some plugs in. As you know, we just got back from Star Wars Celebration. And what an experience that was. Oh, my God, y'all. Um, a couple of things I need to address from the top of the show. We are so sorry we did not stick to all of our recaps and everything that we had planned. Um, as most of you know that were attending it or those that were not really attending it or were watching it, it was an unbelievable amount of things going on. And so our most sincere apologies. And I will admit, we didn't even get a single interview in that we had planned. I had 42 people listed. And not a single one of them got interviewed because we were so gosh darn busy. But we will make that up to you in the long run. I do a video coming out hopefully next week where um, it's going to be from pretty much everyone's uh, who was at our actual uh, Bombad cast around the galaxy and um, uh, podcast little meetup. There's a very long video that needs to be cut down that can be a video from the events. But uh, that being said, super sorry that our lack of content was definitely noticeable at the convention. That is because we were having too good of a time and making some good networking uh, opportunities. That being said, Yay! that's right. Thanks, Rick. That being said, every Wednesday we have Bomb Bad Gaming, which is the gaming show. It'll be making its uh, triumphant comeback after a couple of weeks of hiatus this week coming up. 
playing some uh, maybe some Wii Switch sports. I don't know. We'll see. But the reason why most of you are here is because the Bomb Bedcast. Some of you might be some new listeners. You might have saw a flyer posted around the um, the convention center, and you might just be wanting to attend your first Bomb Bedcast. That's every Thursday for the next couple of weeks. And it seems, by the way, for the next couple of months, we will be doing nothing but recaps. Because we got all kinds of news we're going to talk about with our guests in the next few minutes. But yes, every Thursday, the flagship show, the Bomb Bad Cast, all these wonderful things you see on your screen are a perfect representation of what it's like to attend, especially this right here. That made a guest appearance. Um, it was just a blast. So, so that being said, let's bring in my wonderful co-host, Jerry, the Canon Junkie Cable. Jerry, how are we feeling? Post-celebration. I, oh, man. Post-celebration. Um Still surprisingly jet lagged. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, dude, I, I had a guy at work ask me, like, did you party like a rock star? And I looked at him dead in the eyes and said, I partied like a YouTube star. <laughs> so, and he said, that was sad. So pretty good. And he said, so yeah, that sounds really sad. So, like, uh, pizza in your mom's basement? Cool, dude. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, but no, um, it's funny. It was great. Did you, um, at any point, I could be honest here, there's a video of it too because Katie was filming me. When I was doing our checked bags and our flight home, I started yeah. to cry so hard. I was starting to, I, for real, I'll share the video if, if, if I can get to Katie to send it to me. I was right. straight up like, like I don't want to leave at all. And Jerry, did you have a cry moment? Did you have a moment of that? Um, I have, hold on real quick. Oh, oi, hey, Charlie, how you doing there, mate? It's good to see you again. I'll miss you. I'll miss you. Oh, All right. Oh, 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 oh. You're, you're actually your British accent is getting much better. Um, no. So all that aside. Um, okay. So, I mean, I had moments again, like I, so we, the last night we were like, it's the last night of celebration. Um, I unfortunately didn't get to see our guests tonight, which isn't a segue, you know, like, like that, not like, like, you know, I didn't get to say bye to any of them, except for I said bye to Charlie, I think. And, um, Who? No, no, no. I said by Alden and uh, and Nikki, but like you know, I I think I was a little too I had a little too much fun that night to like be like super sad. Yeah. But when I landed in Michigan, and I got out to my car, I I walked out and it was muggier in Michigan than it was in in freaking California. Yeah. Um, I got to my car and I think I looked at the group text and you know, um. I forget who it was. Uh, maybe Trey. I think Trey was maybe traveling that day too. Trey Mitchell, friend of the show of Skywalk in the League. Um, I, dude, I just started bawling in the car. Oh, I mean, I started like I broke down in the car. I had like what you call a good cry. Oh, um, in the in the in the uh, like long term parking lot, ten dollar parking lot. You know, I could so I had a good cry, and it could have cost me more money. Um, so that's how that's you know, true. like I really let's bring Claire that. in. I want to bring Claire in just because. Let's bring her. Let's bring her in because I want to talk I'm about sure this with her. A moment. I'm sure she had a moment. What's going let's see on, if Claire, Claire? Cried. How are we doing, Claire? Claire? Hi. Wow. Like I'm not joking. You guys talking about it is making me a little, little, little feelsy. I feel it right in here. Little, little, little lump in the oh. lump in the throat here. A little tightness in the chest. It's cool. It's fine. We're fine. Why are we not there still? <laughs> I know, <laughs> and it was only like four days ago too. That's the worst part, and it's and it's gone. And like we'll get it back one day. But how Man. brutal like it, was it, that? It felt that so rough. right. All of us being in the same area though is is the crazy thing, right? Like it just like we got there. That was the cool thing is to go. Okay, we all still gel. It's like it's just it, yeah. it, this feels like yeah. what the world should be, right? Like this should be the world, like every yeah. every day. So yeah. It didn't miss a beat. At least we got that going for us. No. But wait, it's, no. it's so hard to be. That? Yeah, I know. It's like wild. It's it's, you know, you haven't seen people in three years or some of you. I've, not, I've never met ever a before. Yeah. Ever. Wow. Um, we never. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. wait, we have been friends for literally ever is what it's like. It's like not, uh -huh. you know, the beat had never started yet. It had never been missed. So God. it was it was really something. It was something special. That's the thing is about celebration is. You know, it's so amazing and so like addicting to be in a place where everybody's on the same wavelength. Oh my god! And then go yeah. back into this normal world where you're like, 
I just had like the most meaningful four days in like my life. And everyone's like, oh, well, you know, Code and LB was fine. I'm like, I will fucking murder you. I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's true. Like, like literally, and, and nothing gets people like right, them but... that are watching this right now. But people are like, how was the convention? I was like, everything was great. Don't get me wrong. But spending time with my friends was the best part. They were like, how was like the Kenobi thing? I'm like, that was amazing. We're going to talk about that. That was amazing. But like the friends I got to like the events I got to attend with my friends, like it, it's so weird. I thought going into the celebration, like I said earlier, I'll show you the screen cap. I thought it would be work, work, work. And I mean that I thought we'd have call-in stuff from the show. I thought we would be doing more recaps. I thought we'd be doing more coverage of Kenobi. And look, when we got there, y'all. It it went from being that being a priority to then up. No. that being nothing, no nowhere near a priority. Literally, when I was given the opportunity to go do something, like Kay's like, let's go to downtown Disney and go eat and hang out. I'm like, I don't know, babe. Like, I want to be here. Like, this will – You didn't want to leave everyone. No, I won't get this yeah. again. This is the kind of thing yeah. you don't – I can go out to eat with you when we get back home. But, like, I can't sit with Alden Diaz, Pete Fletzer, Nick Milkey – Jason Fry, my buddy Eric, and all of us talk about Star Wars. That that will never happen again in the way that it does in a casual way. Or I can't get drinks with Claire yep, and talk at the bar and get heart to heart. You know, like I can't have those well, things. Well, you're every dressed. Day. Yes, well, I'm well, in full Paul Stanley makeup. Right. I wish, I, I wish, I and we're having could, like, such a serious conversation, and it was so serious. heartfelt, and it was so emotional, and it was such a guard to heart, and he's dressed as Paul right. freaking Stanley, and yet we're not missing any beats. I'm like, <laughs> I just looking back in the moment, it made you. so much sense, but looking back, I'm like, oh, that was kind of a weird thing that happened to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh, but it's funny for me because I get to see Claire's like face, sweet little <laughs> face, and here I am like fully makeup, like trying to talk as serious. That was such a possible. great night. Oh, it was so it was great. wild! Because Claire looked normal, <laughs> I did not. Uh, but real quick, <laughs> let's talk about some of our highlights. Jerry, what might have been your maybe three favorite things from Celebration this past year? Oh my god! So, um. Oh man, three, th- you, you, it's, it's hard. Uh, this isn't just me trying to be like, you know, a YouTuber broadcaster, like, like it's hard to narrow it down to three things. I'm not trying to sound cliche, but like, um, so one of the, so the first day when me and Michael were in the, uh, galaxy stage, uh, yeah. for the big panel and at the end, Claire, Alden, Mel, Charlie, uh, I forget who else was with you guys, like Nikki, like just Mm -hmm. a big group. Like we met at the front and we're like, there were no like words. There was just audible like sounds like. (laughs) And like the pictures, like my my best friend came with Mel and she's she's never done anything like this before. And she's casual Star Wars fan. But I think we've really like upped it to like 8000 because she's been starting Clone Wars and she's been watching Kenobi when it comes out. And she's like, like the day of, she's like, this is going to be my reward when I get off of work. I'm like, yes, I've got her. Oh, I've got her 100%. I love that. That's I know. Awesome. Mel, Mel is spending some much needed time with her lovely, lovely two-year-old niece, Miss Bevy. So she's, she's, no. she's, she's, she's doing well, but I know. That's great. But yeah, it was so funny because like the picture she took of you and I meeting each other, Jerry, it's just a blur of limbs. It's literally just oh my like, God. she's trying to get a picture of us hugging and it's just like flailing. <laughs> 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 like we we literally like went like full um we, we went full Kermit the Frog. We went full Kermit the Frog, I would say. <laughs> exactly. Um, by the way, I want that picture. Was... Um, but also like it's <laughs> God, to pick like other like that. So that was an incredible moment. Scotty, I wish you were there. Like you you made it in the room, which was great. But I got yeah. to hug Alden Diaz before you did. So and Claire and like all these lovely people. So, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a competition, <laughs> but whatever. Um, but that was great. Um, Tori was right outside when we got out. She told me I was adorable, which I was like, you're so sweet. Thank you. Whatever. <laughs> um, it, I don't know. Like if I had to narrow it down to three things, so it would be that first day of like all of us kind of meeting, kind of hanging out and stuff. Finally, yeah. like we're just like bumping into each other all over the place. It's fucking great. Um, Brian. <laughs> love you, Brian. Uh, so 
finally seeing. I think I didn't get to see Brian and Holly until Galaxy's Edge. Oh, so that's another thing. I got to experience. Oh, here you know. Here's my second thing. Claire <laughs> was the guide <laughs> to not one, not two. I'm trying to think of how many of us were there. So there was one, two, three, four, five of us with Claire. If I'm uh, no, the six people six, who believe, had yeah. never experienced Galaxy's Edge. I went on a seven if you count. I, if you count Mel, I believe as well, and yeah. everything. There's a like, big group. Yeah. Of oh us. wow! Damn, Damn Claire, you were in charge. Claire when was. Am I not, Claire though? was tour guide. Uh, you know, we unofficially, um, and she yeah. rocked it, of course, as always. But um, like to walk around that corner and experience that for the first time with like it was with uh, Chris, Dan, Michael McCoy, uh, Charlie, uh, and uh, Glitter Geek Alley, and all that. Like it was, it was. It was a lot. It she got lot. that on film and, too. She got oh, that. Oh, yeah. So good. So don't worry. It's getting posted eventually. I gotta make sure I can. But yeah, she she got the she got the crowd walking in, and she got some like oh, when man. I watched it back for the first time, I got so choked up. There's like a moment where I'm hugging Chris Ryan's, yeah. and like Aww. she caught me saying like. I'm so happy I get to do this with you. Like literally like things like that. She caught the most like cute moments ever. I that's can't wait so to sweet. put it all together Aww. and post it. It was such a special night, even though I've already uh, been, but that's so sweet. you guys were the best part about it. It really was awesome. It, that was, Aww. it was Amazing. such a good time. And I mean, you know, even though we couldn't find any food in the park, we had to go outside to find the food because like all <laughs> the lines were like hella long. We yeah. got to ride Rise of the Resistance and we got to uh, fly the Falcon and it was great. By the way, me and Mel are the best pilots that ever flew the Falcon. Just saying. <laughs> um, that. Don't crush my listen, car. listen, <laughs> she's a hunk of joy. Listen. I was the engineer. She'll I just hold, saved she'll hold together. She'll hold together. Come on, baby. Hear me, baby. Mm -hmm. Hold together. Here we go. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, he's clear. Like, I was fixing your messes, okay? Um, but, <laughs> but so that I guess that will be my number two. And to not take up any more time because we're 17 minutes in here, um, I think my last favorite moment, I think I got to say Mosh Eisley. God, that was a good event. Because I didn't know how much, like, I mean, I don't know if you could tell by looking at me, I'm a pop punk emo kid from way back. Like, I've been in like several pop punk bands back in like college and everything. And I hadn't been to like a a like a, a venue like that. It's gotta almost be a decade. I'm not wow. trying to sound old or anything. It's gotta almost be a decade. And um that was something very special for me. Like that, and I know it sounds silly, like emo music, whatever, like, but no, like it touched my soul in a way that I think like I like I needed. Um also all of my clothes were drenched that night in sweat, which is disgusting. But I even sweat put them on that, the balcony. Like, that, that denim shirt that I brought, I was so excited to finally wash that when I got home because, like, this is disgusting. But, like, it's but it was irrational. so good. And I, I met uh, uh, Goose from Triad of the Force. We were like yeah. scream singing at each other. I just went on their show uh, Tuesday. Well, we, fantastic, fantastic people. We um, parted with also, Ash. Like, I, dude, oh we were God. like, we were, we were, we were scream singing awesome. with Ash Crossan. We were like, like Alex, Dame, Alex and Molly yeah. were there. So we were yeah. like, we were like going crazy with them. Matt Scotty, Martin. I was grabbing you by your little, like you were in your Paul Stanley thing with just like the barely covered nips. <laughs> and I was grabbing those straps and pulling you to me going like, like screaming, like, like, uh, I didn't write sins, Killers. not tragedies uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, in your face while you were dressed as Paul Stanley. Alden was there. We were going crazy. Um, that was amazing. Uh, Anthony Carboni showed up at the end and walked through the crowd like he's emo Jesus. I've said several times, but like he was, he was like emo Jesus Christ walking through the crowd. <laughs> Honestly, that to checks out. He got to the front of the stage without anyone even like miss, like no one like touched him. Just like sh the crowd parted and he went forward. Um, and Beautiful. then our friend Chase uh, from uh, Pink Milk went up there. Oh, and they put their arm angel. around him and just like we're going like. It, like and then he later they were like oh i didn't know who that was they're like oh that was that was carboni it was like so anyway that was awesome like everything everything about that night and i like i almost wore the t-shirt for for this but like any it's 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 uh that was very special for me so that's um, beautiful that's and i get wonderful. to share it with you scotty and a lot I know. of other people i, I want to hear claire's now because i don't want to cry too. i do too i've talked for too long oh no um that it's so uh, like so just that this whole trip, I have to add my honorable mention of taking Mel to Harry Potter land. I know that's not celebration, oh, but no, that was but watching. The yeah, there's a video of watching this beautiful, lovely 
like charming, strong woman who I adore deeply with all of my soul sob like a baby <laughs> when she sees Hogsmeade for the first time. <laughs> when, ah, when she sees anything so awesome. for the first time. It was so cool. I was like, oh, that's what I look like. Oh, no. But it really was special <laughs> to, to share that. I, I think it's so hard to like pick moments because like the people are what are like the moments. Like getting yeah. to watch the Kenobi right. stuff. I had, if I'm not mistaken, at that premiere, I had Christopher Swift on my right, Mel that further down, Leia comes on screen, Charlie grabs my hand, Mel grabs my hand, we're both awkwardly leaning on Chris Swift, and just everybody's crying. It was just like Chris, this whole puddle of like, I got to hug Chris Swift, I got to hug Chris Swift, like I got like, oh my god. Anyway, sorry. That Chris. that man means so much to me. He he has visited me in every state and almost every state that I've lived in. Wow. Like truly, like so he's awesome. he's coming, he's come to see me. And I got to share that moment with him with Leia, who he and I share such a strong love of Leia. Leia is like his his favorite Leia and Carrie. We both like yeah. have such personal reasons to be connected to Carrie Fisher, as we all do. Yeah. Um, but like to see that and to not know that was coming and to share that and to be sitting next to somebody who like respects and like Carrie Fisher has a huge role in like my survival <laughs> instincts. It's right. just like be like fucking Carrie. F I'm sorry, I keep dropping F bombs, but no, be like fucking right, Carrie right. Fisher. You know be like okay. Carrie. We're fine. We're fine at this point. It, it's 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 feelings. The feelings are coming out. So the let it feelings. Flow. Ugh. The fucking that feelings. was a huge yeah. one. <laughs> the yeah. fucking feelings. Oh god, there's so many. It's so hard to pick moments. Like, I don't know, man. It's just, just the people. There were so many moments with people individually and separately. Like getting to hang out with Amanda Wirtz, who's been a long time oh. friend of like yeah. the podcast. Like, because right after like COVID so much. really started, is when I got to know Amanda better. Charlie and Nikki already knew her, but mm -hmm. she like came on the podcast, and we've like corresponded ever since and like finally getting to like meet amanda again after like being friends with amanda unbelievable like unbelievable so cool. we are like the same That's person so awesome. and it's just and we literally accidentally coordinated outfits every single day and i'm like what is this woman <laughs> that's amazing I the last day when you guys had like, the same, like you had the hunter uh headband which was yeah. uh, incredible that was yeah. so good tori God. that's the only time tori. i got to see her on stage tori earrings I there you oh, go. Uh, Shout out to so, Tori, you know, Mandatorian. Amidala earrings and, uh, yeah. And God. that bad, bad headband. The calamari flan I gave you. Um, oh, you mean this? That night. Yes. <laughs> that, is from, that is from Tori's shop as well. So, yes. there you go. Like, I gave I gave her, like, I was like, here, I have calamari flan for uh, uh, getting us around Batu. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, Claire, any other memories you want to bring up? Because I got, I got a couple I want to bring up as well. Oh, specifically, it's just... Nah, it's just I needed you guys. I needed to see my people. I needed to be in the same room with my people. And like, there's so many people throughout the weekend that like, I I needed that really bad. My soul needed that. I know a lot of people can probably agree to that after the last three years after not being able to see each other and like coming back together. So I don't I don't have anything specific. It's just that I love y'all. It's so nice. Know, right? <laughs> it was so nice. So needed. Yes, so we needed Hoop and Raven. We it was so surreal. Movie. And and the three things I'd like to highlight, obviously, seeing Kenobi together for the first time, that was a, my truly, and I will, thank you, Eric, glad to see you in your butt. Eric, that was the man. thing I had kept <laughs> preaching for. I said, I want to watch Kenobi in a group with like with a ton of people. Yes. It could be as a screening. It could be in our hotel rooms, as long as I'm with my people. And literally... Literally, we got so lucky because they dropped that at that first panel. Like, right. oh, those arm bands you have, you better come back before, you know, what was it, 530 and wait in yeah. line. And I was like, what? And like, they didn't even say it out loud then. I think they're keeping on the hush hush. But it was the, and I need to reiterate this for people that were not there because my yeah. family doesn't Police believe Police have a big screen. It Police was the, okay, it was the premiere for this show. The celebrities Red were all carpet. there. It was literally the red carpet premiere. They herded all the insane Star Wars fans in first. Then they went in behind us and they did like an hour's of the press. And then after that was done, we
we sat down, we had a presentation and a discussion before it happened. And then we watched the first two episodes, no recap, which was, I don't know how I would have handled that recap, by the way. In person. Sobbing. That would well, I watched rough. it the next day. Cool. Watching it the next day and just sobbing and on like sitting on Charlie's bed, like with tears <laughs> running down her face. We're like, we, it's so probably good we didn't get this yesterday. No, that would have been the hardest four minutes of my life because oh. how the seating was arranged. It was Josh mm-hmm. Most yeah. on the furthest left side, Katie, me, Jerry, then it was Dan, then it was Michael, then it was Chris. And it was like yes. seven of us. And like, I knew I was going to have a spiritual experience, but to like grab Jerry when Dude, we were there together. Screen, well, was we, that the first when, like thing we watched together? Yes, like, of yes, course, full, ever, ever special fucking first movie. new Star Wars him and I ever got to watch together along with Michael oh, and Chris history. and Dan. And like all I could do was cry, just taking in how incredible that moment was to like have people react. And my favorite thing about the whole experiences was were the reveals and and how well done it was and how <laughs> you know shocking was i usually have a woman crying on my bed that's true that's really true i've heard stories um that being said oy, oy. i feel like by the way and this is this is just stupid but i was the only person that screamed flea when flea showed up on screen <laughs> every time and, and like, I literally, love you for it, but literally, oh my god, it, I was loving it. It shocked me more than Leia <laughs> that it was Flea who was the dirt bag. I'm, I'm and pretty I, sure we, I heard we, the people behind what? us snickering like like the fourth time you did it. They were like, <laughs> like I just Flea! couldn't I couldn't wrap my brain <laughs> like around he, the fact that Flea was on on in Kenobi number one. Was he he was there too, right? Like I, I don't know. I don't if know if he was stage. there. That, that would have like, been amazing. I mean, it was like you thought he was gonna answer from the screen or something. <laughs> like it was so great. <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, so that was uh, that was highlight number one. Uh, not number one. I can't number them. I can't quantify them. My other big highlight was that Lucasfilm published that Lucasfilm actual studio panel was because they did Duel of the Fates with like a a thirty piece men's choir. <sighs> that mm. shit rocked oh. my world. And like, because they killed the lights, and like you could see people shuffling because we were in the little VIP section. You could see people shuffling. I didn't know what was going on. The red light ignites on. Kora Ratama. And it was like huge. I mean, you felt it in your chest. And I'm going to get emotional talking about it. That was one of the greatest moments of my entire life. And then surprise John Williams in the very end. Perfect. Stunned me into silence. Perfect. Complete. Yes. I could barely breathe. Oh. Oh. (laughs) That's when I lost my voice. The whole rest of the trip, I sound like this. Can't even do it. I, said, I like this. I, the whole rest I think of the trip. me and Michael were walking in at that point or something yeah. when the chorus was going, but that was like so just like it was real. It, it's all surreal. It's all surreal. Yeah. Also, I got to experience Michael's first celebration. I mean, overflow room panel, Aww. but still, me and Mike, I got to experience Michael being at his first panel. And That's so beautiful. that was very yes. special as well. That's awesome. Um, there was a lot of that for us too, which was great. A lot of people's a lot first. of firsts. A lot of really awesome firsts. Um, and then last but not least, uh, I want to highlight how much fun I had this one night. While y'all were at Disney, uh, the Disney night experience, the oh, after yes. experience, I got the opportunity to sit with – there's a very interesting crowd. So what had happened was me, Pete, and Nick, and my buddy Eric and Katie we were all hanging out. And then Jason Fry walked up. I guess Pete and Jason Fry are, are buds, like – Pete has a I'm sorry Jason Fry has a shirt that Pete made and like they just they just they're on that level with each other and so we all went outside out that little bar by the pool in the Marriott we sat and talked for two hours and like to sit there and pick a Star Wars author's brain who is not writing as much as he should be for this company now but to sit there and like ask him about what inspired you to do that you know that that uh, prologue for The Last Jedi and to like really get that unfiltered answer, which I'm not going to go into here because I don't want to say anything that, you know, wouldn't, you know, that would elicit anything. We, we want like to continue have... to get nice things. Yes. And, stuff, and so. like we, we had discussions that I never thought I would have with someone that used to write for Lucas. So I was, uh, it was unbelievable that That's the incredible. whole entire four day, five day, six day experience was truly the highlight of my year so far. And the past three years, like making yeah. content this is the first year I ever done that. And then went to the convention. Claire, this would be like your second God. or third year, right? Making content and going to a convention. This is my, my second 
celebration. Okay. So yeah. So yeah. Yes. As a and okay. as a content creator. So as like content creator. That, that was crazy to walk into that lobby y'all, and see people we admire and people that Dude. we work with and people that we respect and to like have a mutual understanding. Friends. You know, yeah. friends, right? These people that I used to look up to are now people that I can, you know, literally dress as Paul Stanley and mock them and then walk away. It's, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's like the most incredible thing in the we world. We gotta play that video on the show sometime after you watch okay. it and everything. Like the, oh. the one that we took where you went out and like scared the pants off of Joseph Scrimshaw, like and and boggled the mind of Ken Knapsack. It was. So, I couldn't so believe it. I couldn't believe I did it. But uh, that being said, uh, I, I love y'all. I love that we got a chance to do this. Love you too. And I love I'm especially so that we're gonna talk on. about. What we're talking about in a moment. So, uh, that being said, let's uh, let's get into the the bigger discussion. You're you're watching Ooh. Yobi Vision, by the way. Uh, oh yes, an, should, it is our recap show. You want to play a should clip? Play, oh, should yes, we play, play the the, intro. Uh, the official intro video yep. of uh, EOP Vision. Do it. Here we go. Was vibing the whole time. The I whole loved it. time. I loved, loved it. God, it's <laughs> yep. beautiful. It really absolutely is. amazing. Um, so all I want to say about this is to start off this whole conversation, I finally feel like the prequel kids are getting our version of the Force Awakens. And not to say that the Force Awakens didn't count, right? But like we are getting legacy shit that we never ever expected. And how do we feel about that? Truly, how do we feel about it? Let's start with Claire. I was, Claire, I've go, go ahead. Like, I want to hear your thoughts. Like, I, this is something that, you know, when they announce new projects, we all are going to do our, oh, no, online, like, not for me, don't want to hear that story nonsense that people do. Yeah. This is the, this is one that I was just sitting there going, I can, this has to be made. This has to be made. It has to, mm -hmm. like, I need, I need this. And like, as a glutton for pain and knowing that Obi-Wan, it just, I just, I need it. I need it. And then when we found out it was being made, it moved from, I need it to, oh, no, 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 no. They have to deliver it. <laughs> you have to deliver it. Yeah. Please deliver it. Please deliver it. Um, so excitement, anxiety, basically, this is this is this is the best Disney Star Wars has has oh, us yet. It, it really yep. is, and it answers mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I'm like somebody who, I, you know, I was I was a little, little pop punk emo kid back in my day, and I really like yeah. listen all the sad music and 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 I did theater, and I always ended up playing the character that died or something bad happened to them, and. <laughs> Which is, I, I just I love those stories. I love those stories that are that are about digging into trauma and pain and right. and not because I like anybody to experience that because I just think it's so interesting to study a human being who's on their break like at the tip of the breaking point. And there have been so many questions. Like I've had I've been so curious about Anakin during this time about about what Obi-Wan knows, what he doesn't know. Like, this is ticking every box. It is addressing every question. How much does Padme know about her parents? Uh, what is what is going on? What is she like? What do they need? What does, this show is everything. It's <sighs> it's freaking everything. This You're absolutely right. This is the story that the kids of the prequel generation that have grown up, this is our, this is, this is, this is it. This is, this is it. This is it. And it's you bring wild. up a bunch of good points that I really want to look at today because there were some reveals in this most recent episode that I just did not <sighs> expect at all. Like <laughs> Obi-Wan remembering his brother, 
remembering <laughs> his parents. Do you else like, like, were you sitting there like, are they, are like, they going to do it? Are they going to pull this trigger? Tell are me they about the trigger? Broby One Kenobi. Tell me about Broby One. Unbelievable. And like, the also. Was this dad? Was this, like, was this dad? Uh, no one's. Anyway, continue. Please do. Sorry. Oh sorry. my God. I just felt, I have never felt like, and it's so funny. I was telling Katie this this morning. I'm like, it's one of those shows where like, I literally pinch myself when I'm watching it because I couldn't believe I was seeing Vader on my TV. So like, I couldn't wrap my brain around the fact that we got like Vader in a TV show nonetheless, but like so well done and like so menacing and so scary and like, and still James Earl Jones. Yes. Yes. And like, I don't know. You take a show like this and you, you say, oh, they're going to make hints to Padme. Then they're going to make hints to, you know, Leia's force sensitivity, which is there, right? Because she mm-hmm. asked about it. And also her, I, I think her, you know, intuitive nature is her force, you know, her, how the force manifests through her. And we'll yeah. look at that in a minute. But uh, by God, this show is everything I've ever wanted. And I was so You know, we all go in worried that we're not going to get exactly what we want out of a show. But when you go into a show like this, you need to let the story tell you what you want. You know, you and I never knew I needed to hear that Obi-Wan had a brother. I never knew I needed to hear that that the light. I'm sorry, the the force is like, a you know, a light in the dark. Like that was just brah. Like that was so magical. Okay, But uh, yeah, Jerry, I, I knew you wanted to bring this up. What do you think of it so far? Well, just just on the uh, sorry on the line of how do you feel when you turn on the light, and I fr- I'm 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 blanking on Leia's response just like in the safe. moment. It feels safe. Okay, that's what it's like. The Force. Um, I I started ugly crying like right there, like right effing there. <laughs> I yeah. was like, oh my god, it's the best description. Of how the force feels, I think I've ever, I've ever like heard. Like I, I love Last Jedi, and I know like Luke talks about like, like usually it's all very like kind of nebulous and out there. But to have such a simple um, analogy that even we in the, the you know in this in this actual real plane that we live in, um, you know, no no offense to them. Um, like we can understand turning on the light, you feel safe. Um, it, it's fucking powerful. I might like yeah. tear up right now. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. so, so damn powerful. And it's like the, the a lot of the times up. we like, it's so good. And a lot of the times we ask like, what is the force? What is the nature of the force? How does the force work? Nobody's ever asked, how does the force feel? How does it feel? Uh-huh. Yes. Use the force. That Leia is the first person to ever ask us this question. And it's so interesting because you know she's asking that question because she's like, I feel like, you know that there's like, I think this is a feeling that you're experiencing that I, that I personally can understand because I felt it. She's trying to get confirmation in herself that this is something that she, that she has. And also the other crazy thing about it is if you think about that line and how powerful it truly is, Obi-Wan has been living as far as the force goes in the dark for so yep, long. Yeah. He's cut it, he's cut as much off as he as he could to keep himself hidden, to stay hidden from the force. And this experience with Leia and and going to have to save her, he turned the light back on for himself oh. again. It's so like the writing is so Whoa. good. It's so <laughs> you know, good. Even even mm. by the end of the episode, though, is he's still in the dark, and we've never, yeah. never seen an Obi-Wan Kenobi who runs away. And that yeah. shit hurt, y'all. I was like, why isn't he fighting him? And I'm like, he just can't. He can't yeah. accept that Anakin's still alive. He can't. He's trying to lure him away so, you know, Vader won't find out about Leia number one and get anywhere near Leia number two. And, like, I'm not going to lie. I know all these people are fine. I don't know how they're going to write it. I don't know how it's going to work. But I am. It next didn't week, matter. I'm, like, panicking. Um, I am freaking out for next week, you know? His arm getting burned. Maybe that's why he doesn't fight as powerful as he does in A New Hope. Like maybe they're writing these things in. Maybe they're making sense of it. And I mean that. They might. Sorry. That's how no, I. That's how I validated it. I was like, then maybe this is why he's not as strong as a fighter as he yeah. is in A New Hope. Maybe he's damaged. And like, I, 
What? What do you want to say? I can no, say no, I'm, so, listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You don't keep calling on me when I'm having my ADHD interruption mode. But listen, <laughs> that's valid. I did see someone and look, not that it's not valid, but um, I saw someone say, maybe this is why he looks so old in A New Hope. <sighs> like, it like is the same thing. Like, what is it like? Uh, uh, we met, we got to meet Kyle Katarn, uh, yeah, at, at Celebration the last day. And like, he was saying, like, I, I was talking to a guy and I love him, and he, but he was like, yeah, maybe we'll see, like, maybe because of his, uh, his injury like we'll see like why his heads are like there's some he's like saying they're gonna get a fight and the force is gonna elongate his head (laughs) 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 well the inquisitor (laughs) what stop worrying about the way they look it's a story anyway yeah it makes me laugh because it's like like i've heard of ultraviolet radiation aging you i haven't quite heard of thermal radiation actual heat Hotness. He got no. he got really burnt. He got dragged across some fire and rocks, and so now he looks like he's like eighty now he's years old. old. That's so yeah, yeah. But See, I mean, that's the thing. When you watch a show like this, and like there's moments like his arm getting burned, I think there mm-hmm. is there is some there is some credence to that. Maybe this is why he's this way. Maybe why this is why certain things happen. But like, I, I was watching that whole show, and I'm like, you know, Vader did want to kill him, and that's evident. He wanted to toy with him and then put him in the fire to make him suffer for what he went through. And Mm. I think we're going to see my dream. This is my one dream before we Mm. even analyze this episode any further. I hope we get a a back to tank flashback next episode. That's just me, though. I just think I just get his arm all healed up and he gets to see young Anakin. I don't know. We'll see. We we, he did very shining esque with uh, someone brought up, I believe, in a group chat. We're in Scotty. Yeah, uh, he saw Anakin standing. That shot of like young Anakin standing really far off with his hood up, haunting. So spooky. This episode was it, so scary. It was. Yeah, it was very horror movie. Yeah, um, like he's the like, slasher and all that. The other thing that 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 vision points out, at least pointed out to me, was, oh no, he he just found out he's alive. He doesn't know he's in the suit. Yep. That is how that is how he pictures him as the last time he saw him, you know, pre charring oh him to God. death. Uh-huh. He doesn't oh know the extent of the machine that he's become. I'm sorry, Jerry. No, no, no. I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go back he doesn't Glenn. know. He's much better. She's talking. He doesn't know. Easily. Like, oh, my God. And that's why when he sees him, when he finally senses that that terrifying being is Anakin, mm. It hurt me even more. And then watching him watch Anakin snap necks of children and and drag people along the floor while he's staring out the window, knowing that he's doing it, not because he wants to kill these people or they've done anything wrong, because he because Vader knows that would draw out Kenobi, just like the Inquisitor said that the Jedi hunt themselves. He's like, I'm going to just murder a whole bunch of people because Kenobi is not going to sit still. And he just had to sit there and watch. It was like, it hurt me so much. It hurts. Why does it hurt? <laughs> but it's, it's, it's the, it the, so much. it's the it relationship hurts. they have. And like, we need to see, and this is the thing I think is so important. Why Obi-Wan in a new hope is like, now nah, we got to kill that dude. Cause we got to yeah. learn why he's he goes more machine from being, now than man, man. Why does he go from being, you know, my brother, I loved you to nah, Luke, you're going to have to go Brian? and kill him. Yeah. Yep. Go get Brian, your dad. Don't make us cry. Don't make yep. us cry, Brian. So like, I think the most brutal <laughs> part of this whole episode, like you said, was the fact that Vader, and this is the line that destroyed me. Leia was great. The whole, you know, the the Jedi Underground Railroad was amazing. Uh, oh my. Was great. But the Ooh, line baby. that the line that killed me was whenever he was like, You should have, you should have, you know, killed me when you had the chance. And I think Anakin truly Ooh. means that. Like, no, I'd yeah. rather be dead and than where I'm dead. at right now. And you that was... just killed me. I was like, and oh, no, no. and my then God. as an extension of that is like, what have you become? Like, I am what you made me. It's just like, oh, my God. Well, like, 
like shout out to Jared the Dark Jedi or Jared the Gray Jedi, excuse me, of uh, the Nerd Academy podcast. A little bit like I, I, I know I said all due respect, and now well, you know where anyway. Um, Jared the Gray Jedi. No, he uh, he did say uh, after that episode um, that it, it wasn't like it was Vader going like like ham, like the the fan, like the the the, the you know the toxic fanboys want. But it wasn't because he's like, I'm a badass. It was that was 100 percent trauma. Yeah. And it was it was trauma on the front. Like Vader is a Vader is an exposed nerve. And the only thing that like keeps that nerve from like it's like the, the suit protects it. But like that's what he is. That's what Vader is. He's exposed. He's he's so vulnerable and in pain that he just takes it out on everybody. Yeah. Everyone. He's like, you feel what I feel every waking second. God. Think about like think about that. Cause like, you know, I don't know if it's canon or not, but like, you know, there's the novels that talk about like the Kenobi novel that like Palpatine makes. I'm sure the suit's not comfortable. And yeah. I'm sure it's like not, you know, like just like the like I mean, the dude has burns all over his body. It's he's never gonna fully heal. Um and he 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 killed his wife. He's been told he killed his wife and he thinks his children are dead, his child. Um, all of that. I mean, the, his his trauma, but also Kenobi's trauma yeah. of I left my best friend to burn to death. Yep. Which is, is already which is already fucked up. Yeah. And then looking in the but, eyes but of Leia, knowing that he did that to her father, and to have her be like, "Are you my dad?" and she and he's like, "I wish I could say that I was." Oh God! <laughs> like because of a how much I royally fucked him up, and <laughs> and b just because I want you to have. Oh my God! It's just my feelings. There's so many feelings. This episode it's was all... not. It's not fair. Why you gotta do it's, me like this? It's guy? not. What was crazy too is we're at the halfway point, right? So we've got to the point now where we got our first two episodes on one night less than a week ago. It hasn't even been a Stop. week, y'all. And then I don't we want got... this to ever end. I know, and that's the thing. I like, want to be show... in that room with all of you guys, like as like a massive arms, <laughs> just like grabbing, yep. going, ah, the whole. Also, time you and McGregor that. needs to executive produce every show now and yes, forevermore. Yes, Give yes. us prequel television shows executive he... produced by you and McGregor. Yep. He already ah. said, what, 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 "What? Who was he talking to when he was like, I want to do more Kenobi?" Yeah, like, oh. he did say that. Please do. Yep. We're doing what we we're, want we're you. Reading. When he was getting like, uh, 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 they didn't stream this. When he got choked up, yeah, during the showcase panel, like I didn't think anyone liked this. I was, I was crying right along. My mask yeah. was wet. Was yeah. So, yeah. Um, these people spent so many years thinking people hated their movies, and now it's like they're like people do like what we did. And yep. And not I even want, that. I, I want to be a part of this. Yeah, it's like not even just that we liked what the the movies, it's that it's had this strong of an emotional impact on who we are as people now. It's like not only was I liked your movie, I was one of the ones that liked your movie. It was literally just like, no, 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 you like shaped me as a human being. And now you need yes. to feel the love back that you have you have given me, that Obi-Wan Kenobi and the prequels gave me. It's like <sighs> It's so emotional to see, like, yes. not only do we not hate you, we freaking love you, man. Yeah. We love you so much. And you should have been feeling it all those years. Yep. And there's no place like celebration. Celebration is not the internet. Celebration is pure love. And he deserved to be here sooner. And I'm glad that he finally got to come. Because it was every and time he stepped on stage, tears in his eyes, cracking in his voice, like thankful grateful i was told by a, a very reliable person who was working backstage at the star wars live show stage he said ewan came out like four times unscheduled just because he knew he wanted to live in the moment and be out there yes. with the fans and oh, every God. time he walked to that stage i got a video of it every time he walked to the stage then it, they, you know the crowd would go buck would go absolutely insane because yeah. we respect him and he's one of a kind and he he delivered the best We feel lucky to have him. He did. Yes. In Star Wars. Yes. Yeah. And like, we spent so much time growing up with him 
and to see him have a great career as well was so beautiful. And let's yeah. hope the same for Hayden. Let's hope in the next couple episodes we get a whole Hayden centric episode oh, where we see God. what Anakin's going through and what that yeah. suffering is like because he needs a chance mm. to act to use his acting chops. And I think he will. I think they're I saving think that for something too. special. But like, I, I, I think I would, they might be saving it for some flashbacks. I'm God, I'm, I'm telling I'm you, we spent so okay. much time. Imagine. I don't. Sorry, we I don't want to get our hopes up. No, up. it's okay. I was just gonna say we spent so much time with Obi Wan and Leia having these moments that I cannot believe I'm even saying that out loud, and I mean that like she's like a proto Padawan, you know? She's like she's like kind of a Padawan, but not really. And she's asking Padawan questions, and she's listening to him, and they very thoughtful questions. Yes, very, very thoughtful, thoughtful questions. questions. And she and she looks intuitive. like her mother. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Like someone pointed out on Twitter that like the hair braid, like her braid starting to fall, that it looks like a Padawan braid, like it's right here. Oh, and I'm like, I love that. let's see if I can find a picture of it. It was ah. I'm just I'm blown away. We have spent way more time than I ever expected with this character. And right. of course, Leia as a kid. I I'm just so excited for that I, alone. We you know how I was the whole time. Like I was basically a blubbery mess after Leia showed up. Like a Padawan it brain. It totally does look like a Padawan brain. Look at that. Oh my god, Ooh. it does. Yes. It's so good. God. Bruh. Like the and again, I was just again, I was I was just playing with my daughter, my Padawan, out in the backyard in a backyard tonight. And um I was thinking about how I'm excited for her to have this depiction. Oh heck yeah. Of a of yeah. a young kid who is who who is so resourceful, so smart, um a strong like she's she's a little girl, but she's strong. She's very strong. She's not depicted as like, you know, timid or sweet or whatever. Not that she's not not any of those things, but just that to have like this kind of like I, I, it means more to me than than I, I I mean and like again I'm just I'm just me you know but like I, I yeah. can't imagine what it means to like maybe Claire Claire could probably speak more to this than I could and everything I, like, I'm excited to show this to my daughter someday I love that you said that Jerry too because I resonated with what you said so hard because when the Clone Wars came out I was a late tween early teen girl who like right. barely spoke uh, so shy so unsure of themselves a little bullied nerd kid and ahsoka came out oh and man like that was my like Ugh. i grew up i watched ahsoka grow up as i was growing up and as i was becoming more confident in myself ahsoka gave me the confidence like to be like I, I would not be talking to you guys on the live stream right. on the internet like that girl would not and ever ever um she'd barely say a couple words um but it's just it's so true though because we all need people from this fake universe to connect with to help us grow to show us what we can be that's damn straight yeah like it's Brian, i love that yes. there is this little head this little girl who is so confident and in, intuitive and inquisitive and just I just it's so true because I grew up and Ahsoka helped me become the woman I am today and I think that's a really good that's a really good point Jerry is that this is for young if they're not going to be too scared <laughs> watching the show it's it needs um, to be a little later <laughs> than, yeah, than my a little bit later. year old right now <laughs> yeah a little bit older um like maybe my niece's age because leia's 10 in this my niece is 10 this is probably a good right. she's not scared of much so it's it's probably and she has older brothers so you know she's seen right plenty of violence they're they're 16 um but <laughs> yeah. she uh, but uh but yeah so i i think that's so that's so true this is this this is something that that I think a lot of people, a lot of young people, whether it's little girls or whether it's young boys or young anything in between, whatever y'all choose to identify as, I think that it's really important to see a young person like this. So yeah, I like oh, I like for your thinking. I want to bring this up too. I if I watch it, I will literally cry on stream. Whenever they had their whole introduction of the cast at the at the actual premiere, oh. and they did Jim Smits 
and the crowd went nuts. And Jimmy Smith literally went out there like a basketball coach. Who was like, right, 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 right. He's, yeah. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's so go. Cute. Yeah. And yeah. then <laughs> when they said her name, the crowd <laughs> went nuts. And nuts. I was sobby. I couldn't hold back. Because she went right for like Hayden and uh, we and give, uh, we give you her a where it's about time we give a young actress a warm welcome. It, it could have been Jake Lloyd, oh. it could have been Ahmed Best, Jake it could Lloyd have been anyone. That. And like literally, we screamed, we all lost our mind, and she got the warmest of welcomes ever into this fandom. And she yes. should never forget that. No matter what yeah. people say by the end of the series, she freaking she- killed it. Listen, and we will fucking protect her with our last breath. Don't you <laughs> dare do what you did to Jake Lloyd, you basement dwelling, mouth breathing shitheads. Okay, you, you, I digress. I digress. Excuse me, poodoo heads. My bad. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it PG 13, but the, the, again, the feelings are flowing. The feelings yes. are flowing. And I you will know what's crazy? For that girl. I will do it. I will, Don't make I me. I will just like I've only had young Leia for like a week. Like that that meme from, from <laughs> nine nine. Yes. But I if something happens to her, I will kill everyone and myself. <laughs> I haven't seen anyone say this yet, but I, I'm gonna make y'all hurt even more. Shut the fact Scotty. that she decides the fact that she decides to name her son Ben. I know. Yes. Now. Nikki and I now. were talking Talk about, about this. That. Nikki Charlie now. and I were talking about this. Like, like it meant a lot when we heard it. And the Force Awakens, because it was a new hope, and that's how Han and Leia met. But to hear Ben now, you're like, so no, much they right. did not. They, so they, right. she's referring to this version of this man. And like, who's to say that like Leia will ever see Ben past this point, right? She, for all she knows, Obi Wan or Ben could be dead, you know, from this right. point on in the series. We just don't know. And like, I, I don't know how much she, remembers his name being obi-wan i know it's brought up once in front of her but that's about it like i i, I really wonder <sighs> you know because we gotta it's gotta make sense when she says help me obi-wan kenobi you're my only hope like it's gonna i, I if they're just doing it so well and like i i wasn't worried so at well. all about this show because i knew with the amount of hands and if you watch the credits that's the most people that have worked on a star wars since the films have been coming out that's yeah. a ton of people the, the fact that they gave Pablo Hidalgo lore advisor, right? Lore That's advisor. That's a huge deal. Right. they went to him for stuff. The fact that they gave Dave Filoni a special thanks. The fact that they gave Christina Ariel a special thanks. Like, it's like you are really the keeping it in, like, in the zone of people that that love and respect this stuff. I, I Favreau had a special thanks. I mean, it's just um, – I can't believe it. Like – I love the theatrical movies. I would have loved to see this in a theatrical version, but to get it on a much more personal and slow level has been so, so perfect. So good. So much better. And despite it being slow, something I've talked about with, I think, um, like uh, try to the forest. I mean, even all of you, I think, I don't know if we've said this exactly, but every single episode of the show has not an ounce of fat on it. Nope. No. Not that I like. I love nope. fat. Like fat is tasty sometimes. There and there are Easter eggs. There are little references and things. But they're like every single moment of this show is important, is is impactful. Yep. It means something to the entire saga going forward. It doesn't just yeah. mean like anything to this specific time frame. Like you said, it's touching the the sequels now because like I was thinking that too. Like you know, like th- this is why she names him Ben. This is why she names God, him Ben. That's unreal. Um, she had this like adventure with. She had an adventure with him. <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> they bonded in like in a Nazi in this like a very like in Nazi Germany essentially is what it feels like. You know, like everything. This is just. Um, it it it's incredible. It's incredible. But I don't know, like you like like again. We've already said the writing's incredible and everything. But like, I, 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 I nothing has felt like oh they didn't have to do this to me. No. Nope. Yeah. And like, like I'm yeah. a big obviously big theater nerd. Did theater all through college. One thing that you learn in your like playwriting classes, in your acting classes, you know, in your script analysis classes. Not a single thing in your script, not a single movement, not a single stage direction, not a single word 
should ever, ever be just picked without intention. Every single moment, every single clip, every single little thing has all meant something. Whether yep. it's like every single tiny, itty bitty, minuscule little quarter second of film has had some sort of importance. There's no time wasted. There's none, none of it. None. It's just there is so much. There's so much meat on these bones, and I'm so excited. Moses Ingram looking at the the carving of the the Jedi symbol. I don't remember, like yeah, putting her hand on it. that, but yep. not touching it. Yeah, oh. like there's so like because I mm. think you have you guys mm. heard the theory that she was one of the younglings in the very first clip. Have well, we heard this? Yeah. Wasn't that confirmed this in um focus in subtitles? It was, was it oh, I didn't confirmed? Know that. Possibly. Someone told me it was confirmed in subtitles, but like I haven't oh, watched I that first that. episode with subtitles. I All I can tell you someone in the chat, if you've seen it, let us know. Was that confirmed? Yeah, that if, shot, if you saw. That shot started on her, it started on Coruscant, pulled out to her, and then it ended on a close-up on her, and then they ran away. I'm like, that is... And she's the one who say we, says we Reva. run, right? Yeah. 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 That, that who could be Reva, right? And yeah. So, I, yeah. uh... I've really enjoyed Riva, excuse me. It's only been like I said, it's gonna be tomorrow's Friday. It's gonna it's seven days today, essentially, since we got those first episodes. And like <laughs> I oh I've already been it's already been a week. Like I can't believe I have to wait till June twenty fourth, I think is the yeah. date, to Literally. really be able to watch all this. I, I can't <laughs> and I wanna watch them all one after another. I really wanted to sit there yeah. and have someone make a super cut where they don't cut at all, yeah. where it just goes from scene to scene and watch a six hour movie. I think it'd also, be amazing. This is totally random, but as of two minutes ago, as of two minutes ago, we were watching this episode a week ago. Oh, down to two minutes. That's that's God. when we were sitting down to watch the beginning of this episode. Oh my exactly God. seven days and we're six days and I don't want to I'm seven, tired. I'm, <laughs> it was it was a long time. I was we about to do another, math we down to the very minute and I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I I just felt so connected, you know, after leaving celebration that this was the best way to allow this high to continue. And like it's yeah. gonna continue. And everyone has the recap shows, everyone has their perspectives, people are gonna have their gripes, but this is the first show to me personally that I it's gripeless. And like yeah. sure, there's some things I'm sure people are like, why didn't Vader just walk across the fire? Or whatever, like I get that. That's a fair argument. But I wanna I wanna think like Vader and I wanna understand like I don't want to I don't want to, but I have to. Like he didn't want to go out and kill Kenobi. He wanted to torment him and see what monster he made, right? Like that that's the whole intention why he didn't walk across the fire. Man. Yes, he is he's mad and he wants to and he has every right to be mad, right? His his master apparently to him betrayed him, and it's all about perspective. And like now that we've he got and cooked him. Let him burn to death, Let, and he still. I, you know how many people I've talked to are like it's <laughs> right, well, like you know how many how many people I've had conversations with who are like, why didn't he put him out of his misery right there? Yeah, like well, because we have four, five, and six, and you know, yeah, continues. <laughs> but but it's like it's it's like it is like wow. Okay, I've always thought that's an interesting th thread to follow. Why didn't yep. he? And is like, that something that he regrets? And obviously it seems like it is yeah. like I didn't have the guts to end him. Yeah. To that's, give what him I, the that's what I thought. Because it's literally what, like my theory. You know, when you watch these these shows, you know, like I was just rewatching Stranger Things before the new season came out because nice. it's good. And they and what I think it's season three. I can't remember. But at one point they come across a dying deer in the woods. Oh, yeah. That's the and first it's, season. It's the actually, dying. The first, is it the first season? About. I rewatched it recently you. too. <laughs> but it's like it's the dying deer on the side of the road dilemma. Like, are you gonna have the right. cojones to put that deer out of its misery? And and Kenobi could not. If it's a deer you really care about that you named and you raised, mm -hmm. that's the that's the humane thing to do. But also, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't be able to do it. You know, um, I don't think like, I would. Frankly, I don't know if I could either. It's, just, it's hard. That was the uh, to end that... something's life. Yeah, it's yeah. permanent. That's heavy. It's like. It's well, very the, to me, the the heaviest part of this, and I know we're gonna get payoff. Like, you don't you don't set this up in Revenge of the Sith. You don't set this up in novels and not get payoff. But the line that they keep reiterating that gets me like so pumped up was the master help me, 
Master Qui Gon. I need to know what to do. <sighs> and you know, when Qui Gon shows up, we're all going to be a mess. And it's going to be at the time he needs him the most. And it's going I'm to going to piss him. myself. I'm going to piss myself out of like, sheer just like joy Liam when Qui Gon shows up. Like Liam, Qui-Gon. like Liam, like Neeson. Liam Neeson. I'm gonna piss myself just like him. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Qui Gon Jinn Come is the on. is the one Jedi. The one Jedi. Qui Gon Jinn is the best of the Jedi. He's the only damn mm-hmm. one who made yep. actually pay, listen to the will of the Force. He's probably my favorite prequel Jedi. And yep. when like the last I hear of the High Republic him, Jedi, he is. He is. And when I hear his voice, you are going to see it in a reaction video and there will be snot and there will be oh. tears and voice cracks like a, like I'm experiencing right now because my voice is still and on. McGregor. And I have a job where I have to talk to people all day. And yep. it's just. I can't. Unreal. Claire, I, I think. Uh, I don't want to get our hopes up, but like, I think we're getting more than a voice. The way they're yeah, setting, the way they keep banging <laughs> that drum, the way they From the keep first banging episode. that drum. Oh, cool. And the moment, they and like stop- think, thinking about it, like from the selfish yeah. nerd point of like seeing and or hearing, and then the self, and then on top of it, the emotional like component of watching Obi-Wan reconnect with his man. I won't be okay. Like just thinking oh. about how Obi-Wan's doing. I'm like, I can't, I can't. God. Oh, Brian. Yeah, Brian. He's already been oh, living with the no. idea that Anakin have his misery and he's faced with should he do it again? Because he is, he's so, like, again, it's not, he, like, yeah, he's strong with the force. He's super strong and everything. He's not a badass. He's, he's hurting. This is someone yeah. who is lashing out in like, he's in pain. Very vicious ways, but yeah. Unending. Like, I, oh my God. It's sorry. I'm just watching the third episode again, and it's the moment when uh, he sees the young Anakin, go, like just God. far off. Oh man. Um, but yeah, it's wow. just, do you do that? Do you yeah. like, he's, he is the deer on the side of the road right now, yeah. even. He's still there. It's like if you took the deer on the side of the road and put it in a freaking metal suit and said, no, you're going to keep going, deer. You're going to keep on going. Let's go. Um, it's anyway. I want that. A, I wanted that to be much funnier, and it just it's just still too sad. <laughs> this is a, so our, our. We have a very hidden guest in the back trying to type in. Very, very, very. <laughs> I don't. It made me laugh. Well, it's a very uh, special guest, Scotty. Yes, we, yeah. we have one of the stars of Kenobi, don't we? In the background. <laughs> I'm not bringing him in. He looks. He looks like he doesn't <laughs> want to be on screen right now. No, he's shaking. His yeah, head. we're getting no. the. We're getting the no. All right, thank you, Ewan. <laughs> it's fine. So. So it's weird, right? Like you watch this show and we all go on with our own personal feelings. And, and like, like I, like I said earlier, it's a pinch me moment. Anytime I see that opening thing on screen, I'm like, this is real life. Like we like believe it's it, Mando is great because Mando is always unexpected. And Mando always brings in really funky and weird stuff. And we're like, Oh my God, you know, you got the Kim Tono. Oh my God. You get a frog layer. Like these are all so weird, but you watch this show and you're like, this is how they are fleshing out those small moments. This is how we're getting more Leia. Like what? More oh Leia God. out of the Kenobi show? Like, and there's and how much more Leia we could get because they cast such a young actress. I know. Actor. Maybe yeah. she'll have her own show if they make their own Leia show. Oh my God! I couldn't even imagine. We if have, we like, get uh, if we get a Leia, models, have her write the show. Have Claudia yep. Gray write the show because Please. her problems on Leia. I'm literally saying here, like, what do I want to young Leia? I want Leia, Princess of Alder, on the show. No, they will not do that, Claire. But at least, at least have mm-hmm. give Claudia an invite to that writers' room at the very least. My goodness. Yep. We didn't think oh, we were gonna get Leia and Kenobi though, Claire. No. Here we are in a post are. Kenobi three episode world. <laughs> and um, let me just say, if there is a Leia show and it's like and Jimmy Smith and everyone's like that, like I will explode from the, <laughs> the fatherly feels that that come from that show and just like everything about like I would I want it so bad, but also I know God. it'll hurt me so fucking much. <laughs> this please is... give me more of this of the Star Wars found family please. stories. Yeah. Over please, and please, over please, and please, over, please. nail it into my skull. It never gets old. Yes, please do it. This yes. is the yes. uh, this is the first show. And like, look, like I said earlier, I love Mando. I love Book of Boba Fett. Hell, I love all the. I love everything else in between at this point. Even new Clone Wars stuff. But this is the very first show where I'm like, if I went unconscious 
for the next three weeks and I can wake up and then watch this show, I'd be fine. <laughs> like, I mean that, like, like yeah. I've got to know Never what's Nation coming mode. next. Yeah. And like, this is the first show that's truly made me like, like I will be staying up till 2 a.m. and I've never done it before. And I have work the next day. I'm working a summer gig. Like I am not like that for ever with Star Wars. I'm like, here we are. Like this is the show for it. And I can't believe I'm saying that. It's so good. It's awesome. Um, it, we're kind of winding down the conversation. Um, and, and we did this on improv last week, but we were measuring how much we liked the episode <laughs> with how loud or how long an how EOP long? can fart. So yes. if you were to measure this episode, and you can make the fart noise and might add some more to it. Um, but if you were to measure this episode, uh, Jerry, how long of an EOP fart would it be? And maybe what kind of fart? Describe the fart. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it would be pretty long. I think it would change pitch a couple of times. <laughs> but also, Here. there's going to be a little bit of shit come out at the end. <laughs> Because the payoff, the payoff. Because this was because also because Vader's very scary for one, but also <laughs> still cannot believe we got this. Can't believe we got. And I, I know it's not really him. I, I listen. I don't think it's him. I can't believe we got like a Seth Rogen mole man. Yep, like, Zach Braff in here. Who is is Zach? Yeah, Zach Braff. But yeah. like also like that. He's he's like a very like you know. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, thin blue lines, support the troops. Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm one of you. I got a lot of guns at home. Bang, 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 shoot, 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 boom, boom, boom. Uh, bullet, bullet, gun. Anyway, um, that's it. It's yeah. how long, long was the fart? Changing pitch fart. Long, changing can pitch, you do it? shit at the end. Okay, can you do it or no? <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> that's that's how much I enjoy. This I like that you. We I look, We have such scared. bonkers. Like let's let's oh, okay, let's give, it, give it to us. How, how much you like this episode? How much can any Opie shit? <laughs> All right, Claire. Do you want to do the next EOP fart? Sure, sure. I, this is not something I prepared for, but here we go. <laughs> Um, if I were to <laughs> if I were to quantify <laughs> this episode in EOP flatulence, I would have to say it would start off <laughs> it'd start off by like a little like slow burn kind of like sweet, soft, high pitched little fart. Oh yes. But yes. by the end of it, like and it's and this is gonna be a, it's all I would agree, it's also a very, very held out fart. Um <laughs> but by the end of it, it's so loud and wet sounding <laughs> that <laughs> moist how could it not be brand. we had moist vader yeah, yeah. vader cooked it tried to cook him alive for a minute okay it had to <laughs> oh, i had to start man. out with it and i you know obviously my voice is gone and i have asthma so my 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 uh <laughs> i can't i don't think i could quantify the length sufficiently but it starts somewhere with like a here we go i can't wait for i love claire for <laughs> And it ends with a <laughs> shit. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. Oh man, I love the preparation. I saw you like, oh shit, oh shit. I'm sorry. I <laughs> it's okay. I can't do it. I'm not as good of a Ooh. fake farter as I used to be. I don't Damn. know what happened. Damn. <laughs> Growing up, we grew up, Claire. We grew up. <laughs> I'm out of practice, oh, clearly. I, mine, you know, Claire, mine's very similar to yours. <laughs> you know, kind of like a, like a, like you're pinching it. You're like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm in a public place. Oh my god, you're, you're like, you, it's, it's one of those. It's one of those. Yeah, pinch that loaf, man. You know. <laughs> and you're like, oh no, don't be bad, don't be bad, don't be bad. And then, and then you're like, I'm just gonna let it happen. And it was. <laughs> And then the very last part is like a is like a clap. It's like when you like <laughs> like when you shit like a bubble. And it's like, and you're like, whoa, it hurt. That's the last part for me. It's like one of those like where you like you can lift your leg up at the end and like and it's almost like you like are pumping the fart out with your leg like yes like it's just like <laughs> oh, oh man, that's what it's like. 
<laughs> it's like what a Woo. fart. I can't. I can't even say it. I'm not even gonna say it. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, no, keep going, keep going. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, it's like when a, it, cause g- girls don't have this, but they have it different ways. Uh, it's like when a fart travels, <laughs> like when a fart travels through your balls. <laughs> and it like, you feel it rub, rupture through your balls and it pops at the front and you're really confused. <laughs> That's what this episode was like. You were like super lost. You're what like, what are you no. talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Ow. man. laughs> oh. oh, Troy knows what I'm talking Woo! about. <laughs> <laughs> A ball fart. That's what you're saying. Whew, okay. It's we like when the jacuzzi this. jets go underneath, you know? <laughs> 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 oh. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I'm glad I'm glad 10 people heard that. I'm glad you, glad you guys 25 we had earlier. God, that was bad. Okay. Uh, that being said. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jiggles your sabak dice. No. <laughs> no. Oh, oh no. Oh, Jesus. We do go on. We do go on. God. Well, Claire's dead. We killed Claire. <laughs> we've we've killed Claire. <laughs> oh, man. She's gone. <laughs> That's the... That's the energy we need to bring, Chris. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Chris. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm sorry. Oh man. Well, we have um, failed you. <laughs> we need to bring. We need to bring Claire. Big Claire. Uh, before we sign out, anything? Any final words you want to bring up before we end the show? <laughs> Don't let the all the opie farts aside. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just ready for the rest of this wild ride and ready to cry a lot. I already yep. have. I wish I had many a tear. I don't know how to, I just don't know how to describe how much I love this series. It's just, it's, it's so, it's so good. It's so good. It might be, it's, it's inching its way up to being my favorite Star War. And I'm, Mm. yeah. That's a, that's a wild thing to say. Isn't that crazy? (laughs) We've all grown up with so many things and like this show has taken what we love to a new level and like truly to a new level thematic level of star wars and i never thought i'd say that like like yeah. has taken what we love of the prequels and just said yeah you need to love this more and we're gonna watch the prequels in the new light because of it it's amazing wow. and watching God's those amazing. movies as kids and now as adults watching this it's just like it's we're at a point like you know we've lived through some things and pandemics and and hard times and good times and yeah. and losing and good relationships mm-hmm. and bad relationships and making and losing friends and and losing pe- loved ones and and like those kids who grew up with that glitzy golden sparkling prequel trilogy are now have lived some life and now we're getting to see this you know this guy's going through it <laughs> and we're like yeah oh man we are, we're aging with it perfectly, but it, I yeah, just, I think anybody, anybody, I just, wow. I, I just it's shouldn't incredible. talk anymore. I'm over it. Ep- no, it's funny. One, Kenobi was like all of us in quarantine. I'm just saying like, you know, like, yeah, this, seriously. Yeah. Isolated, was, scared, yeah. watching children from a distance. Um, yeah. One thing too, I will say that I think it's, it's super important to bring up watching, is the fact that we had watching children from a distance. <laughs> we had to, uh, we all had a very emotional week last week and like I'm ready to get my emotions back in normal. Not, not the, nothing wrong with being emotional, but I'm ready to kind of have a normal week and then I can cry even harder next Wednesday because like this past week has just been like there's people I love. There's something else. There's a story I love. There's, you know, lore that I like. It's just like super hitting us hard and like. Yeah. This show I knew would do it, but I didn't think it'd be just so one after it's another. everything. It's, it's been brutal, y'all. Yeah. It, it like like to reiterate what you all have been saying too. Like it like it Claire, you were saying it's inching its way up, like it is for me as well. Like it's it's just it's it's hard to compare anything else to this. This yeah. feels like the best Disney sorry, Disney I don't mean to use the Disney Star Wars thing. No, it's okay. Um but like, 
like Scotty, that theater experience in those hard bleacher, like those little folding chairs with God. you guys. And, may, and maybe part of it is because it was with you guys. Yeah. But also that was the best theater experience I've ever had in a star Wars movie. And honestly, like that topped like in watching in game for me. Yep. Same. Um, it might've almost topped ghostbusters afterlife, which you know, is wow. a big thing for me. Yeah. It, it's up there. It's up there with it. They're neck and neck right now for me. And that's, I can't believe that this is that this is doing this. Yeah. You know, it deserves you know. all the numbers and love it can get. And I mean, that. yes, it deserves it. it. it they, these actors deserve it. They deserve a pay raise. They, they deserve to be in more roles, too. They just yeah. do. Um, that Absolutely. being said, Jerry, I'm going to let you plug the Amidala initiative and then we'll get Claire to say the last famous words of this podcast that all do right. not have to do with ball farts. So, Thank Jerry, goodness, let's get it. Hold on. <laughs> I'll get you can't just mention up. you can't just mention ball farts and then go, <laughs> hey, talk about the Amadell initiative, Jerry. Um, so guys, so it is Pride Month. So happy Pride Month to everyone. Yay. Um, yes. Um, and listen, we love our look, we love our whole Bombad family, we love our guys, we love our gals, we love our non-binary pals, we love you all. Um, but just listen, it's great to change your profile picture to like a rainbow background. It's great to like, you know, like share tweets and everything. But like, if you really want to make a difference, you need to, we, if you can, you need to try to give, uh, to, to these people who are, you know, we're celebrating this month. Um, but just like give, give to, uh, uh, we, we, we need to give to, um, we need to give something back to try to like help, uh, push forward uh i don't know, basic human decency it seems like um but okay before i go on a, a whole diatribe listen the amadala initiative is a cause that you can give to it is a, a collaborative community effort of 77 star wars fan creators uh it benefits equality texas for trans youth and their families um and i don't think there's any better thing you can do um this month than to give 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 to the Amadal initiative. I'm actually about to go do it myself right now, not to toot my own horn. I'm just trying to say like, we need to do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. It's very important. Practice what um, you preach, right? You know, exactly, like, exactly. Like, especially for a cause that's obviously, you know, extremely meaningful to a lot of people that need it, you know, like absolutely give what you can and be respectful of the cause, even if someone may not understand it. And that's a lot of people right. in the world. And all all it truly takes is is again a little basic human decency understanding. Um, these are people who just want to exist alongside us and be treated as humans. Um, and I, we're getting very preachy. I mean, listen, Kenobi's making me feel a lot of things and everything. I'm getting I mean, it makes me really preachy and everything. But like this, these kind like the Amidala Initiative, especially and and different things like that, make me very uh, very preachy because again. Um, basic human decency should be easy. Um, yeah. so let's let's make it even easier. Okay. So all right. And the church said, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> let's hear from our sweet guest Claire. If you want to plug anything, by all means, get Please your plugs in before we sign this thing out. All of it. I see a lot of friendo is in the chat. So in in case you don't already, uh go follow Bro Axiom on all yes. socials at bro axiom go follow the imperial senate podcast on all socials at imp senate pod on twitter um go follow the link trees go be youtube subscribers go there's chris i'm sorry see i, I plugged it i didn't let you down buddy every sunday night shooting the poodoo on bro axiom and every tuesday quick shot previews of the comics that will come out the next day imperial senate podcast love you charlie and and we just cried a lot this week. I'm just overwhelmed. Anyway, I'm C I'm at C Strib's places, and um, Star Wars is good, y'all. <laughs> is damn good. If you're not following Claire and Broaxium and, and Imperial Senate, like what? Like seriously, get the fuck out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we love, but like, but no, no. Like, if you like us, you should be following all of them because if we all are cut from the same cloth, we're all really good friends. We all love working together. Um, yeah. There's a lot of synergy there, so. Please, 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 please. A rising tide lifts all ships as the maxim goes. I don't, I don't well, know what look, that means. Anyway. Claire, what should the wonderful people do? Yeah, I hope that y'all have an excellent week. And 
Stay bombed. Did you say impossible? <gasps> Pasquale? Only kidding, Jackie. I've changed my tune because I finally thought of a possible dream that we can all share. <laughs> what oh is gosh, it? Pasquale? It's a dream about a world where nobody is poor or sick or hungry. Oh, oh now that's a dream we can make come true. I'm gonna make a change for once in my life. It's gonna feel real good. Gonna make a difference. Gonna make it right. As I coin up the collar on my favorite winter coat, this wind is blowing my mind. I see the kids in the street with not enough to eat. Who am I to be blind, pretending not to see them? Jared lost to me at Trivium, and he may always be a loser at Trivium. That's because his Jedi color is gray. 